okay, so E8 is this wonderfully symmetric lattice in eight dimensional space that some people think explains all the fundamental physics. And it turns out that there's a simple game that we can use to understand exactly what the structure of this E8 lattice is. Um, while Berger introduced this, it's called the mutation game. A lot of the things I'll say in this video are sort of indebted to his videos, which I shall add links to in my description. So the way we can think of it is like this. We're thinking about Mars and there are different cities on Mars. And the, in this particular example, there's a red city and a blue city and a green city. So the cities correspond to nodes in a network or vertices in this undirected graph. Um, so the vertices correspond to the cities and the links or edges correspond to these different roads um, over which these Martians can travel. Now, there's a couple of strange things about Martians. One of them is that there are also anti-Martians. And if a Martian and an anti-Martian occupy the same place in the city, I mean, occupy the same city, they cancel each other out. I draw my Martians with a purple face and I draw my anti-Martians with a white face. So this Martian and anti-Martian will cancel out. Actually, let's look at a setup like this where we have two Martians in the red city and we have one Martian in the blue city and we have two anti-Martians and one Martian in the green city. In this case, this Martian and anti-Martian will cancel each other out. And so the final population counts are going to be two, one, minus one. If we're counting the number of Martians and this has a single anti-Martian in it, and so what we have is our graph. We can think of the vertices as cities. And then we have a particular state of the population, which is like a function from the vertices of our graph to the natural numbers, which could be negative because we can have uh, anti-Martians. And then there's a certain rule by which we might change this population list or population vector of our graph. Um, and so what we can do is, we can do what's called a mutation, let's say a mutation at the blue city. So when we do that, we're going to change the population uh, scores of the different cities. OK, so let's take a look at this mutation game in action. So we have these three different cities, the red city, the blue city and the green city. And each of these cities has different Martians living in them. So I draw ordinary Martians with the purple solid faces and these anti-Martians uh, with the white faces. And so the first thing we do is we know that our Martians and anti-Martians cancel each other out, so we can rub those two Martians out. And now what we want to do um, to illustrate this mutation game is we're going to do a mutation on this population at the blue city. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, we do the flip stage. So this Martian in the middle becomes an anti-Martian. And then each of its neighbors are going to clone their populations. And then these newly cloned populace are going to move across the roads into the blue city. And then there's going to be some cancellation from Martians combining with anti-Martians. And so after we mutate that population configuration at the blue vertex, we now have this population configuration. So what we've essentially done, so what we've essentially done is gone from the vector two, one, minus one, and then we've updated this population vector at the blue vertex, and basically to do this, we've made the current population at the blue vertex or blue city negative, and then we've added the total population of the cities connected to the blue vertex. So that's plus two minus one. And then the, and that's how the population of the blue um, city changes during this mutation move. And the populations on the red cities and the green cities are unaltered. So they remain at two and minus one. 
And so you see how doing this mutation at the blue city um, alters the population of the different vertices. It turns out to be a correspond to a sort of reflection in the n dimensional space of population vectors, wherein is the number of vertices in our graph. And the way we can think of it is that um, there are stages to it. So the first stage is the flip stage, and that's where every inhabitant of the blue city has their sign flipped. So every Martian becomes an anti-Martian, and every Martian becomes an anti-Martian. And then the second stage is what I call the reaction stage. So all of the neighboring cities to our blue city are um, alerted and um, they're alerted to this flip operation. And to try and sort of deal with it, they each clone their own population and send a copy of their population to the um, blue city along the roads. So the net effect for our populations is as follows. Every uh, vertex or city apart from the blue city doesn't have its population changed by this mutation event. But the way that we change the population of a blue city is first we times it by minus one, that's the flip stage, and then we add the sum of the populations of all of the neighboring cities, that's the sort of reaction stage where all these neighboring cities clone their populations and send them to the blue one. So that consists of doing a mutation on the blue city. And then in this mutation game, we can do these different mutations um, using different cities to go from different population lists or vectors to other ones or to change the population state. And we're particularly interested in what happens when we start with a sort of lonesome um, population state, uh, which we could also call a sort of unit vector. So this would be an example. This would be the red unit vector. It's where we have one Martian as a citizen of the uh, red city and no Martians as the other ones. And so we have this vector space of population configurations on our graph. Um, and since every population is described by n integers, it's an n-dimensional vector space. And then we have these unit vectors corresponding to these sort of singleton populations. And there's a certain dot product that we can define on this vector space of populations. And when we dot the unit vector associated with one city with itself, we get two. When we dot it with the unit vector of an adjacent city, we get minus one. And when we dot it with the unit vector of a city that's not connected to it, we get zero. So that defines this dot product. And then we can define what's perpendicular in this n-dimensional space. The perpendicular hyperplane consists of all the vectors that have a dot product of zero with the particular vector in question. And reflecting in the hyperplane that's perpendicular to the blue unit vector corresponds to doing the um, mutation of the blue vertex. And that can also be described as multiplying by a certain n by n matrix. Um, which can basically be um, obtained in connection with something called the Cartan matrix. Um, and then when we play this population game, uh, starting with a particular graph, we can look at all of the uh, population vectors that are reachable uh, by playing the game, starting off with the um, with the unit with the different unit population vectors, and that's going to give us this root lattice. And the different points of the root lattice are different points in n-dimensional space. Uh, so z to the power of n, where n is the number of vertices on our graph. And there's also a certain dot product, um, which I've just described. And so that gives us this EH structure where we have our graph as this particular graph here. Um, incidentally, if instead we use the graph which is called, I think it's called A2, and it's this one. Then we get the um, eightfold way of Gelman, you know, describing the quarks. This is another thing that Wildberger talks about. Uh, but basically then we can get E8. So we think of all these population vectors that we can reach starting from these different unit vectors and they form this lattice. And um, well, there's various other connections here, but um, perhaps the most interesting is that we have this certain kind of dot product that gives this n-dimensional structure 
potentially a sort of non-Euclidean form, but when our graph is one of these ADE graphs, everything works very nicely. And um, using this notion of dot products, we could find the usual notion of reflection and describe our mutation that way. So we have a sort of linear algebraic as well as a board game way of thinking of um, what this EA lattice is.